Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday, or maybe it's probably Thursday we are, depending where you live. I hope everyone's having a great whatever time it is for you. I know it's evening time for me. I think for most of us here, it's evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we are wrapping up the week for Tim. And we are starting Sherry. But real quick, let me introduce maybe some people who you don't know if this is your first time watching. So my name is Sarah. I am a Wikitree team member. And then next to me, we have Mindy, who is our overall Wikitree coordinator. We Nothing would happen without Mindy, I think. <laughs> and then next to Mindy, we have Christine. She is the captain for Tim's week. She's been hard at work perfecting his tree. And then we have Tim, you know, our, our current genealogy guest star. And then next to Tim, we have Sherry, who we're kicking off pretty much right now. <laughs> And then next to Sherry is Karen, and Karen is Sherry's team captain. And that's everybody who's here. So maybe this, like I said, this is your first time watching, and you don't know what Wikitree is. But Mindy would love to tell us all about Wikitree and what we do. So yes, I would. <laughs> Wikitree is a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. So unlike a lot of other genealogy sites where you work on your tree and I work on my tree and we probably never talk, on Wikitree, we get to a common ancestor and we all work together to find information, share sources, and resolve any discrepancies on the profile. So in other words, we collaborate to grow an accurate single family tree that connects us all. And most remarkably, it's free. We all love free. Thank you, Mindy, and that is Wikitree. Mm -hmm. And now the Wikitree Challenge. The Wikitree Challenge is our year long event where each week a team of Wikitreeers takes on a genealogy guest star's tree and makes it more accurate and complete than it is anywhere else. For instance, this past week we've been working on Tim and we're about to start Sherry's week. The challenge is part of our year of accuracy and our goal is to improve our accuracy on Wikitree, make more connections and make friends. Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you a little bit about our point system. While we're working on the challenge, points aren't everything, um, but they are, you know, they give us some motivation and we all work together to earn those. So on the spreadsheet that you see on the left, we put the profile we're working on. Um, sometimes we have 40 to 50 genealogists working at the same time, and you don't want to be all tripping over the same three profiles. So that's how we keep track of which one we're on at that moment. On the right, you see the G2G, our forum post. Um, each guest has their own post. We can go in and post questions. We post our bounty points there, new relatives, um, things we found, stuff like that. And then this is our biggest means of collaboration. And honestly, I don't know how we do it without it. We do our live chat and discord. So, um, you know, we go in there, we can talk to each other. We can say, hey, I need a second set of eyes on this. Or I need a translation. Can you look at this document and please tell me what the date is? Or, you know, make sure it's the right parents. We get in there, we cheer each other on. Um, sometimes we just go, hey, I'm not good at writing narrative for a biography. Who wants to do that? I put a ton of sources on there. There's always somebody to help out, which is really, it's really fun. It, it keeps us motivated once again. Um, and yeah. And we just had a past genealogy guest star join our Discord. Yes, Catherine. we did. Very exciting, <laughs> Catherine, Catherine Wilson. <laughs> and she will actually be a participant this week. She is Ooh, paying it for to someone nice. else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then this is our top five where I kind of handed at the points. Our MVP is our most valuable player. Now, they can get points two ways. They can get bounty points for every brick wall they break or a correction they make on Wikitree. Um, they get individual points for every one of the nuclear ancestors. So a direct line ancestor, their siblings, their children, the system automatically gives our participants a point. And, you know, it's just a little fun way to keep track and, and get people going if, if things slow down during the week. So um, Anonymous Sharky was our MVP and top five player this week, um, participant. Then it was Donna Bowman, Carol Keeling, Joan Whitaker, and Alice Thompson. 
Let's take a look at all of the stats really quick for this week. Yep, and do a refresh. Oh yeah, let's hit that refresh button because people were working <laughs> till the last minute. Let me tell yeah, you, uh, they they were still working. <laughs> I know people were still asking questions at this last hour. They hadn't quite switched. Sherry, I'm sure they probably a lot of them have already started on your tree, but <laughs> some of them once you get you know in that profile, you just can't give it up. So total points. Now this is ever you know things combined. Um, any ancestors or the nuclear relatives that are um, added, it's 357 points. So what that works out to is 18 direct line ancestors of Tim's that were not already added. And then created relatives, those are those nuclear ancestors I was talking about, and there's 219 of those. Now bounty points, once again, this is either a brick wall ancestor or a correction we made on Wikitree, um, is 120 points. So that's 12 ancestors that were added or, um, or corrected on Tim's Wikitree branches. Now for profiles edited, we had a unique 606 unique profiles edited. So, you know, with a small group that we had working, about 30 people this week, um, that was amazing. And then total edits over the week's time was 2,574 edits. So anytime somebody went in, added a source, fixed a date, did something, um, over 2,500 edits, that's incredible. Yeah, did a great job, 12 brick walls broken, and we're gonna reveal those momentarily where Christine is gonna tell us all about Tim's tree. <laughs> right, well, I'm gonna do my best because as usual, there was so much going on. It was difficult to keep up with everybody's hard work. Um, the first one we're gonna look at is Peter uh, Jacob Jansen. And there was some uh, brick walls broken up in Renatha Miro's um, line. I think it's Renata. I think that's R Renata. Correct. Yeah, Renata? Renata. It's a German name. Okay, I need to learn some German apparently. So um, <laughs> anyway, her father um, gained a father and a grandfather. So um, those lines went up. We still need to fill in all of the um, the girls. We're missing all the mothers, but that's not unusual. I don't think. Yeah, and there's such a shortage of the records, it's really unfortunate, you know, that yeah. um, even when you do find like a baptism finally, or a marriage, it'll just list the father's name. There is no mother's. It's not like where sometimes the American or English records, they just put the first name on yeah. some of those you don't even get a first name on the mom. I'm just impressed that we can find any of these really early German and Prussian um, parish registers mm -hmm. and then translate them. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and get those profiles made. Um, and then up, but still in the Jansen line, um, we added some people to Isaac Bourne. So he was married first to Maria Behrens, and there was um, a little bit of confusion about how many children she had because she had passed away, and then all of her children were baptized a significant amount of time after that. But we learned that because they were Mennonite, that was um, a tradition that they had, that they would baptize the children not immediately after they were born, but much later when they were adults. So we don't know exactly when she did pass away, but we know that she was buried um, two days before Christmas in 1775. And her four children were then baptized between 1767. Uh, they were born between 1767 and 1775, and they were baptized um, between 1787 and 1790. And then he was married again in 1776, so a year after Maria had passed away. And he had two more children with his second wife, Anna. I know we have a free space page about um, that church, well, the Mennonite church. So it's an example of what you're not just making profiles, but also other aspects like free space pages. And this wasn't even included in the edits for the total points, so. Right, this yeah. didn't count, just extra stuff we like to do. And that shows you um, a little bit of history about that particular area's church and you know what their difficulties were. And it also lists some of Tim's ancestors that were 
uh, baptized, married, and perhaps even died, you know, in that parish and services were held at that church. So that that's kind of fun to look at. And this really helps bring the whole story to life. It shows the community mm. um, where you're not just looking at one person and, you know, here they were born, they were married, they had some kids, they died. They died. <laughs> the <laughs> you know, end. You're, you're seeing how everybody was connected, you know, the way that we, we still are today through, um, through various communities, whether it be church or uh, work or otherwise. Yeah. That's what we treat all about, about getting getting more than just dates and names, getting all mm -hmm. of the facts together. And then we had uh, some people working on Elizabeth Lawrence. Um, so the family had come to America on a ship that was called the state of Nevada. Now there's two different people who had um, recorded when they, when that ship actually docked. We know it came in August of 1875, but we have one record saying it was the fifth and one record saying it was the eighth. Um, but either way, uh, they came over in 1875 in August, um, and they docked at uh, Antwerp in New York. Um, Diedrich had a brother, Heinrich, who came later on another ship um, in 79. Um, and then they all moved out to Nebraska, which must have been, I can't even imagine, in in the 1870s, traveling from from New York to Nebraska, and all mm. the things that they must have gone through to get there. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we have Peter Peters, who I thought was going to be difficult, but <laughs> almost immediately there was definitely some records found. Um, his father was also Peter Peters. Um, and they were from South Russia. And I know that the names there are, are the geographical names are always changing. Um, but eventually there was, uh, after everybody was uh, creating um, jobs and factories and everything, there was um, a five year period where there was, you know, around 1920, where there was a uh, plague. And I mean, we see that um, a lot of times, we see that in Ireland, we see that in Europe. But this was the impetus for um, a lot of these families to um, to leave, to emigrate. And uh, some of them came to Canada um, and some of them just moved around. They went to Prussia. And then we have a record, or we think that he died around 1930 in Russia, uh, Peter did. But that line got extended. Yeah. And Jacob Mars. Peters was proven to be the father of the elder Peter. Um, and that just opened up that wall for more ancestors to be done. Uh, Mindy worked on Margarita and added all of these children. Now in Have this list of children, everywhere where you see the little angel wings, that was a child who died young. And unfortunately, we do see this a lot with um, with families where they lose a lot of their children um, quite young. What were you saying, Wendy? I was just saying um, I we did we had these last week too, <clears throat> and I know especially the the Prussian yeah. families um, and just had it, they had to have had incredible women, you know that they had a lot of this where they had a dozen kids and you know they're lucky if four make it old enough to to get married, um, yeah. <clears throat> and right off the bat in here going into this research I found two different families and on, I hit this one on the, the as the second one I had found like this. And I have to tell you, and I'm not trying to make light of this, but I had to say in Discord, okay, is everybody getting large families where the kids all die or am I just drawn to these? Because that was, you know, like the first couple of families I worked on, it was like, I said, don't peek at it. It'll break your heart. You'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, unfortunately, yeah, we do. We do see that a lot. Um, and even we didn't, there was uh, a lot of families last week that we didn't even talk about, but we saw that with them. Cherry Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Rare surname. Mm. Um, so Mary Cherry Holmes's father, Edward, 
<clears throat> has new parents and Edward now has uh, five new ancestors. I don't know if Sarah, you have the slide there or not. But. So this one. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll just, yeah, we'll move on to the Youngman, uh, keep going with the Youngman family. Um, so Charles Youngman, we added more siblings and other children for him. And then someone found that his sister, Flora, was married secretly to a Dr. Davis in February of 1899. And then their marriage announcement was published in the newspaper a few months later in May. Oh, they eloped. <laughs> I guess, but why do you want to hide a doctor? I don't really know. I think you, <laughs> you're like, hey, look what I got. <laughs> it would be interesting to know more stories about that. Mm -hmm. And then Charles's father was involved in a workplace accident. Mm -hmm. He worked at the armor packing plant where they um, had ammonia and he was exposed to that. And they really thought that he was going to die, but he didn't. He um, survived and he lived, I think it was another 43 years after that. And as a result of finding this information, we also have another free space page yes. for the armor packing plant. Mm -hmm. There it is. Ta -da. And he was responsible for the refrigeration in that pa packing plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a very touching story when I first found that about maybe four years or so ago. That's. Yeah, I thought, you know, the and I, as I recall, it said that six doctors worked through the night to save his life. And being a physician myself, I thought that was an incredible dedication that they saved my great, great grandfather's life. That was a pretty mm -hmm. amazing thing for me emotionally to, 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 to read about that story. And probably, too, in, a, in an area of manufacturing or in industry where they weren't particularly familiar with ammonia and its potential fatal effects. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was uh, surprising to me too, but not a tragedy, which is good to find. Um, unfortunately, we do find tragedies. So um, I think this was, uh, I think this is Lewis's, this is the Fannins anyway. It was yeah. Charles, um, yeah. Charles' maternal it, aunt. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So she was a, a daughter of John Allgood. Um, anyway, for whatever reason, um, her husband suddenly uh, killed her one day. Um, and there's quite a few articles about it in all of the newspapers. Um, their children were grown by that time. She was 52. Um, and the, the best they could surmise at the time was that maybe he had been drinking mm -hmm. and decided to come up behind her and kill her and then he killed himself and they if he hadn't they had already set up a, a lynch mob they were the community was going to go and kill him anyway hmm. when i so, first read that i thought he was killed by the mob but no it was a lynch yeah mob. so they had formed a mob and they went to look for him and they found him in an outhouse and he had drank carbolic acid and by the time they found him, he was already dead. Wow. They found a lot and of good also, newspaper clippings for this. They also set the house on fire, but they were able to put the, the fire out, so they saved the house for what it's worth. Anna Armstrong. Yeah, so Anna's uh, line goes up uh, into the Wyron family. And we actually found another Wyron, this, I don't know how anybody wants to pronounce it, Zooch. <laughs> um, but that makes him your 10th great grandfather. Cool. And then we had a lot of work done in, um, in New York. Yeah, uh, tough. With, with various um, guests that we've had, we've had a lot of, I mean, where do you come when you come to America? You land in New York. And so a lot of families settled there. So it's not um, uncommon, I wouldn't say, for us to find that uh, ancestors of other guests that we've had have uh, 
settled in the same area. So we have this map of Cayuga County um, and we have a free space page done to it for it. And you can see where all of the, um, where all of the people had settled and all everybody's um, identified like your ancestors and Thomas McKinty's ancestors and Catherine Wilson's ancestors, where they all lived. And there was, um, one of the uh, families, and it was Sarah Dewey Root, the Root family, had 136 acres in Brutus. And it was, um, they received that uh, land grant. And then it stayed in the family, it sounds like, for quite some time. Yeah, and... Um it was Kay who worked on this free space page, and she was actually used to be a professional cartographer. Yes. yes. She did an so amazing she loves job maps. on yeah. it. <laughs> so if anybody has any map work to be done, hint, hint. Hey, there she is. She's <laughs> watching us. Hey. If it's in case, <laughs> knock it off, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody needs work to do, right? Oh, this was one and of the this lands. Is, uh, yeah, this is the copy of... Um, part of the land record where the 136 acres in Brutus was um, given to Ralph Root and others, and it lists the whole family. So if you can read the cursive, it lists Ralph and Clarissa and Edward and um, Sally as well in there. And uh, I want to talk about this relationship finder. This is one of the tools that we have at Wikitree, which is great. Um, you can enter in two unique profile IDs, so yours and somebody else's, or if you're trying to figure out how two people in your family are related, you can enter the two IDs and hit the find relationship, and it will tell you the genealogical relationship of those two people, if there is one. Now, of course, it's not perfect because, you know, in order for it to work perfectly, we need to have everybody on here, everybody's profiles done and everybody's uh, families worked out with all the descendants and uh, spouses and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, it was interesting and I plugged a couple of um, IDs into it and we found out that Dallin Quas potentially is your 10th cousin. That's removed. Cool. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the cutter line, yes, I remember that line. Yeah, so you'll see like um, some of like one of his profiles up there is uh, marked as uncertain. So we just need to go through. You just you know, I'm sure that the research we're pro we're pretty good, I would say at Wikitree at sourcing. But um, if all of that is correct, then yeah, your tenth cousins. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. We're all we're all connected and and there. Yeah. Everybody's connected, but it's fun to see how, you know, genealogy runs in the family. And then we get to uh, Parson McIntyre. So his dad was born in Harrison County and in 1863, he was drafted for the Civil War. Uh, but he made it through the war and he celebrated his 76th birthday with his children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, uh, which is amazing. Um, the Renwick. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Um, I didn't look at this line. Mindy, do you know this line at all? Uh, this one, she just gained the new parents on. So oh, she gained okay. George Renwick and Margaret Lang Renwick. Um, the only thing that that I thought was kind of cool, you know, is is we always look for the wills and the different things that help prove it, but also tell you about the family dynamics. And um, on Isabella's husband's will, he left her all the household furniture, two cows, two sheep, one horse, and the use of the mansion house to my dearly beloved Isabella. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it was sweet. That is sweet. No. Oh, I thought there was another one there. I think you just. Oh, I see. Oh, I clicked. Yeah. Yeah. I clicked. Way Elizabeth Peasnell, um, <laughs> she gained parents, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. 
Paul Fiesnell and Martha Knight. Mm -hmm. They're both from Northamptonshire, England, and they were married in Tiffield, Northamptonshire, and had their children baptized in St. Martin, Lichborough. Great. And, I, and that that was all of the new ancestors, interesting finds for for <laughs> Tim. There so. was more. I just there was everybody was working so hard, and there were so many things um, to try to keep track of. And you know, when you only have seven days, it's yeah. hard to get as much done as you want to. But well, that's some challenging lines. Some of these are very very challenging. And will require, yeah. I think, more DNA analysis, which, of course, is my uh, my love and joy. So right. I, I I'm not giving up on any of these brick walls. I, I'm going to continue to plug away on all my parents' matches and uh, my other relatives' matches to try to break through even some of those that you haven't been able to break through or I haven't. I've struggled with for years. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not done yet either. But I appreciate all the effort. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, it, we, it we was, like making the families too. Like I hate seeing, you know, when you have a, a husband and a wife and they only have one child, you know, they didn't have just one kid. Right. So, <laughs> you know, we like to find the rest of the dozen and, so hope, and all their yeah. spouses. And, and hopefully by filling some of these families out for you, Tim, I know you already have an incredible amount of research, but hopefully it, you know, helps you in the long run, um, find more records for the families and, and track where they've been. And, more to test. And, and you're going to share like the research notes, uh, um, for instance, like the Renwick situation is particularly uh, uh, that's that's a that's a definite break uh, breakthrough for for me because I had I hadn't really looked at that line in great depth. So uh, all the notes should be on all the profiles. All the notes will be uh -huh. on the profiles. Yep. OK, that's great. the whole point. So whenever we find something, we have to put the source on the profile so mm -hmm. that the next person can come around and see where did you find that information? And it right. should be in the citations and the sources. And right. we also put things like negative evidence, you know. So if I look in this parish right. for this marriage record and I can't find it anywhere, I put that in there, you know, mm -hmm. on this date so that you don't go back later and look through that whole same parish. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes. I know there was a lot of that, you know, when we get into Wales and nobody knows, <laughs> nobody knows how to find anything in Wales except everybody who lives over there. Well, we the love. problem with Wales is that there everybody has the same surnames, and it's very difficult to piece the families together because it's not really clear uh, which people um, were related to other people. And if they moved, uh, then you're really, really stuck there in terms of the research. Yep. But our our England project has worked, I would say, a fair number of miracles so far this year. Mm -hmm. in finding yes. incredible, incredible resources mm -hmm. and sources for um, for all of those profiles. And yep. then, of course, our German project has been finding crazy amounts of records, parish registers and, and whatnot for everybody from Germany and Prussia. And it's really, it's been fantastic. Absolutely. So... Really quickly, because we had a question in the chat about something Wiki Tree related. So let me, because Lewis was asking, oh, if we wanted to find a free space page search to see if there's already one created, how would I find it? So one way is you're in this special search page on Wiki Tree. You can get there simply by clicking the little search bar up there. And then you scroll all the way to the bottom. And you can search like let's say the armor plant, right? Armor packing. Yep. And it will search all of WikiTree. There's ads at the front, but it should come up. We'll look, grab some other stuff too. But in theory, this would show everything on WikiTree. That's how you basically search all of WikiTree. You found didn't find this one particularly, which is interesting, but. This is how you would search. And you can narrow it down to categories, images, help pages. So, yeah, that, that, I just wanted to answer that question. And really I think quick. in future, the more free spaces, free space pages that we create, then we can 
alter that search criteria to just look for the free space pages. And there's also a way in Wikitree Plus for those of you who know Wikitree Plus to search specifically for free space pages, but I won't show that right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but Tim, we <laughs> so we broke down what twelve twelve brick walls? Twelve? Is that right? Did I say that right? There's there's brick walls and correction, so yes. So 120 bounty points, 12 brick walls. 120 bounty points, very good. Mm -hmm. Some great free space pages, some corrections, wrote some good biographies. We did, it was a great week. We did I'm yes, looking forward to so, analyzing it more and, and get, digging into the source citations and, and uh, things that you you found that I, I haven't seen before. So uh, that'll be really fun. Mm -hmm. So... That unless anybody has any questions for Tim or Tim, you have questions for us, we will make our way into starting for Sherry's week. And then we will introduce Sherry first. And I think your captain has graciously volunteered to introduce you. That's right. <laughs> I'm Karen and I am excited to learn more about Sherry and Sherry's family this week. Uh, Sherry Hudson Passy, she's best known for her company, Carolina Girl Genealogy. And when we look at her ancestry chart, we'll understand why she chose that name. <laughs> With her company, she does not only traditional client research, but she offers instruction. She gives classes and does individual coaching sessions. And she enjoys giving presentations on family history and keeps the blog right at carolinagirlgenealogy.com. Sherry has also been part of a team of genealogical researchers who have worked with the U.S. Army to repatriate the remains of soldiers who have been listed as killed in action. The team employs their genealogical skills in conjunction with DNA testing to locate next of kin so that these war heroes can return home to their families. She's a member of a great number of genealogy organizations and a frequent participant in and speaker at genealogy conferences across the country. Just just uh, two months ago, we saw a number of presentations from Sherry at Roots Tech. On top yes. of all that, she hosts Gen Friends, which you can find here on YouTube. So do we have any questions for Sherry? Or, or Sherry, is, did we cover everything for you? Was that, do we do yes, anything? Thank you. Thank you. You're a busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I can't even tell you because I spend so much time doing genealogy for other people that, I mean, I'm sure my tree looks really kind of pathetic. <laughs> so. Yeah. A lot, a lot of our stars have said that, that they focus on their time on helping others. And now it's our opportunity to help you. So I'm privileged. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Sherry, what got you interested in genealogy? Oh gosh. You know, I, I really can't pinpoint a moment, but I do tell people that one of the first things that I remember just hitting my heart about family history was discovering, I, I asked my mom when I was about 10 years old, why we called my step-grandfather, in my head it wasn't connecting who's a step-grandfather, why, why did we call grandma and grandma and why do we call Frank Frank? Why don't we call him grandpa? And so she explained to me that her father had died in World War II and that my grandmother had remarried and so that's why it just stuck. That's just what we called it. And so that's the first time I can remember just that heart, you know, getting into it and wanting to know more. And, and then, you know, I was always a kid listening to all the family stories. <laughs> so and so did what? And they had, they married who? And they had how many kids and all that kind of stuff. And so it just, just kind of evolved. I can't really say this is what got me started. I think I just was always interested. So who's your favorite ancestor? Oh gosh, you know, people ask me that. I, 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 I don't know. My most intriguing one is a great great grandfather who just walked away from home one day and they don't know what happened to him. There's all these theories. But but which one is that one? It's, it's um, Bertrand Campbell Price. And he was last seen with a bunch of money in his, uh, <laughs> he was going out to buy property, is what a court case says, because I've got the court case says he was going out to buy some land and he never returned. And so there's all these different rumors and theories in the family of whatever happened to him. So wow. <laughs> y'all can find him. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> 
back then you could go anywhere, right? You could change your name. You could you could just right. I mean, you could 20 miles away from home and nobody would know that that's where you were. So, you know, Sherry, yeah. I have a I have a grandfather that was like that or a great grandfather rather. And, you know, at the end of it, all told when all the uh, mystery was solved, he had three different wives in three different places. He had kids with oh, yeah. each of them. Mm -hmm. The third wife didn't even know anything about the first two. And when I contacted one of her children, he was yeah. like, you're lying. <laughs> I, you're I've lying I, i've got one of those too but i found the marriages and uh ooh. And yeah 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 and people didn't know and i said hey the guys, skeletons that fun. fall out of the closet <laughs> yeah so well that brief story was very interesting do you have any other interesting stories about ancestor and any of your ancestors um, most of them just led, you know, just just normal lives. I have a lot of military men in my family history. Um, I have a lot of people that just came to South Carolina and stayed, <laughs> didn't go anywhere else. I joke and say my dad joined the military. He joined the Air Force, and he was the first one to really leave. <laughs> so, and here I am back. That's awesome. I was I was born here, but I wasn't raised here. So, but we, my husband and I we we came and moved here about thirteen years ago. So, but um. Yeah, I just, I know that there's some other things probably going on in the family. That maybe I don't know about, but most of them were just, well, my, um, my grandmother's mother was supposed to have been adopted. And so the only, the only, the only record that I can find that, um, that says that she was adopted because everything else just says daughter, right? Was her wedding, her, her marriage license because she was under age and her father had to give permission and it was one of those things where I just cranked to the next page because everything else was just the front and the back, the front and the back, the front and the back, all the way through everybody's everybody's record. And for some reason, I just thought, I'm going to keep going. And there it was. I give permission for my adopted daughter wow. to marry. And wow. Things always go a couple of pages both ways. You never know what might be put in there. So, so I've got that. Um, no, I can't. No. I'm so excited to see what you guys have. <laughs> she says, I just want to hear your stories, your new right. ones. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see what you find. <laughs> so when did when did you first discover WikiTree, Sherry? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I can't even just, I know I've had a tree on there forever. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, looking at when you created some stuff, it looked like, like 2013 when you um, <laughs> uploaded a Jedcom. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know. I can't say they've been really good about coming back and fixing things, but I sure appreciate the people when I get, you know, um, an email saying we'd like to merge or somebody saying, I don't think that this is right. I'm like, isn't that why? <laughs> because we want people to say, mm -hmm. I don't think this is right. And this is right. why I think that. Yeah. So we might already have a little bit of that going on in the, in the <laughs> probably in the discord <laughs> and that's fine that's good I wanted, to, I wanted to be correct you know so what are your current brick walls that you you know of that you have that you maybe would want to bust through well there, there's campbell price but i don't know if anybody's gonna be able to figure out what happened to that man and <laughs> i i just don't know um my uh, early family in North Carolina, um, I have found a cemetery with, uh, um, there's a Martin and an early, but I haven't been able to connect. I know that there's people, um, I know there's people that are working on the line and, you know, people will say, this is the mom, this is the dad, but they've got no sources. <laughs> so you don't know, <laughs> you know, yeah. where they found the information and you ask them and they don't remember where they found the information. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um so that's that's one of them too. I'd like to see. Also, my Doherty line, my uh, South Carolina Doherty line. I'd like to to know when they came in and where. Um, this is a funny story because those family stories that you discover that are not true. And my grandmother swore that her Doherty's came in, and in, in the South is is Darty. They say Darty. <laughs> anyway, her Darty family um, came during the potato famine. And I was like, oh, but they couldn't have because I keep finding it. In the <laughs> I, like, oh, I hate, I hate to tell you this, you know. And then she had the whole story about, oh, there's a Doherty reunion, and you know, they all came from Ireland in this one county. I'm like, I, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but 
part of that story might be true because there was a previous potato famine in the late 1700s. So perhaps that's when they came and the family story, you know how they get twisted and turned around. So yeah. th perhaps there is a little truth to that. Or perhaps it's just that she made it all up because <laughs> she didn't know her grandparents. They died when she was young. Both of her parents died when she was young. So I don't know. I don't know where she got this story from, but that, <laughs> I'd like to know where majorities came from in Ireland <laughs> and when, you know, when they came to South Carolina. And I know there's a lot of people working on that. So there's a lot of people that would really appreciate mm -hmm. <laughs> if we could find that. You never and know what we'll find. <laughs> I know that's why I'm so excited. <laughs> now I know you said you're hoping to see new finds, but you know, keeping in mind what our challenge has been, oh, what do you I hope know. overall to get out of participation? Um, I think just uh, a cleaner tree, a more up to date tree, a more sourced tree. Yeah, would that's that's really what I hope that I'm we can do. Brick, mm -hmm. brick walls. That would be fabulous. That would be just you know icing on the cake. But really, mm -hmm. just to know that this tree is is as as good as it can be in a week of all <laughs> people looking at it. So mm -hmm. that excites me. That excites me. So, mm -hmm. and I'm just Every grateful to grateful to be on and and be chosen to do this. So. Yeah, we we thank both you, Sherry, and you, Tim, for for participating in our challenge. It's been great, and um, I know each week we have at least found broken one, at least one brick wall. We haven't gone a week without breaking a brick wall. So let's hope we don't Let's keep the trend. Let's keep it going. <laughs> And we've broken over 200 brick walls in total, I believe, so, for the whole challenge. So maybe nice. more. I'm just kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been awesome. Oh, look, we we have yeah, a whole bunch our, of guest stars watching. Ellen, Mert's watching. Ellen's watching now. <laughs> and actually, hitting our our month three mark is complete. Our first quarter, we've broken down 237 brick walls. This wow. was the one that got me at the end of those three months, you know, for those uh, edits I told you, every mm -hmm. time somebody added a source, mm -hmm. fixed a date, did whatever, we're at 39,904 edits from the WikiTree community. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just crazy, right? Wow. Yeah, that, that doesn't include... That only includes nuclear relatives. So like any of the free yeah. space page edits or if somebody went off on a real tangent rabbit hole. <laughs> so what a wonderful service that you're providing. That's, it's just thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. we, Absolutely. Well, we Our thank pleasure. you it's both. It's been a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. We've I also know. just surpassed, uh, what is it? Eight million. 800,000 genealogies. I saw oh, that. eight million with DNA test connections. No, not is it eight? Uh, I think it's eight hundred thousand. Oh, profiles. Oh, profiles. Oh, oh. profiles. profiles. Oh. I thought you meant genealogists on WikiTree, but yes. Oh, eight hundred thousand genealogists. Yes, mm -hmm. with an eight There's million over eight million DNA test that. connections. With 26 and, uh, million, over 26 million profiles on WikiTree. Yeah, and this challenge is just growing all of that beautiful WikiTree connections so good karma great <laughs> now, karen did you have any other questions for sherry hi sure do we have any questions in the chat all right i um sherry would you like us to copy any photos from your personal collection onto your ancestor profiles at wikitree and where would we yeah. find those would we look on your blog or your ancestry tree um, and or are there photos yeah. that you don't want moved? Oh, on? no, anything. It's fine. Anything that I've got posted on my blog, I've got permission to put on there from, they're either mine, my grandparents, or I've asked for permission and the copyright is on there. So, All right. and so that's, big, yeah, that's a fun task for folks who, um, who are, you know, not, not familiar with the research in, in the area where we'll be finding your family. And, uh, you saw the free space pages like the packing company and uh, the land records in New York that happened during Tim's week. And there's so many of these things that are part of history that just aren't evident on the vital records and the census and the probate. And so I wonder if there are clubs and societies that were important to your ancestors. Are there some uh, of those that you might like to learn more about? Um, let me think. My, I have several um, family members who worked in the mills in South Carolina, a lot of mill families. 
that um, was it textile? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, so Olympic that, mills in, in Columbia, um, Hermitage mills in Camden. Um, you know, they would just go. There's some mills in Aiken and and Charlotte. They would, you know, just go where the work was. Right. And as a matter of fact, we just, my mom and I, just went up and down the streets in Camden, South Carolina, looking for the house that her grandparents <laughs> lived in, trying to figure out. You know, she's like, I think it might have been this one, but maybe it was this one. So, mm. anyway, so yeah, that would be great. And I have a lot of ancestors who fought with the swamp fox too. And I don't know if you've got a page. I'm sure you do for Francis Marion on there. You know, right? I'm I'm singing the Disney song right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Post and put that on there with the people that fought. For him. Yeah. And, and so we talked about the employers and professions. We're really talking about the textile mill. How about um, any special schools or, or colleges or um, that are dear to your heart? Uh, no, most of my people were real, you know, farmers and that. But I do have yeah. um, my grandmother's mother was sent to a Catholic school in Sumter, South Carolina, called St. Joseph's Academy. And I've been looking for records for that for a while, but yeah, so they sent her there. She's the one that was adopted. And then mm. when, her, when her adopted mother died, I guess wow. the, her father just said, I, I need to put her somewhere. <laughs> and so they sent her to the wow. school. Apparently she just, I mean, they were Southern Baptist, but they sent her to yeah. this, this Catholic school. Really? Just loved it. Mm. My grandmother remembers her taking her over there when she was a child, introducing her to the nuns. And mm. you know, so, mm. but. And, and like you said, uh, her family was Southern Baptist. Is that the main um, faith community that's been mm -hmm. to your family over the some years? Some Methodists, some Presbyterians, yeah, but mostly those Baptists in <laughs> South Carolina. But yeah, there were some there were some Methodists and, and uh, Presbyterians as well. All right, we'll check the chat for more questions. But my last question for you is: um, sweet mustard or vinegar with uh, pepper or uh, um, the mild tomato sauce? Oh no no no, the sweet mustard, Pig, Piggy Park. All the way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks so, so much. So if anybody has any questions for Sherry in the chat or Tim or any of us for the about the Wiki Tree Challenge, we'll we'll wait a minute or so just in case. But again, I wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank everybody who is watching, all of our captains christine and karen thank mindy and then our guests and then we have some guests in the chat just thank you everyone everyone just made this challenge so fantastic <laughs> so i don't see any questions coming in so with that we'll probably head off don't forget you can always find us at wiggytree.com we're on social media so check us out. And then Friday, we have our Friday date night where we date lonely profiles. It's always fun. <laughs> and then Saturday morning, we have our weekly live cast where I go over all of our updates about WikiTree and we talk about fun stuff. We look at photos and my cat always interrupts. So it's great. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, we will see you then.